had spent, before I started teaching, I had spent two years in classes in the vet school, touring, watching the sorts of things they do, but I didn't know it from the inside. And I heard of stuff in the first semester that I taught that literally chilled me to the bone. The kids told me, the first fight I had with the school, the kids told me, we have surgery next term. I said, oh, yeah? They said, we just found out how, how they teach us surgery. Every group of, uh, I think it was two kids, gets a dog, and we cut on them, you know? And we cut on them nine times in three weeks. And if we want to care for them, provide aftercare, we have to cut class. So I went over and I, I talked to the nurse who was responsible for all the dogs. How much care could she give 140 students' dogs? Um, and she, oh, she was just broken, you know? So she let me back into the kennels. See, here's the way it worked. It started on a Monday. And Monday they did a surgery on the dog, threw him back in the cage. Wednesday, they did another one. Friday, they did another one. The next Monday, they did another one. Wednesday, they did another Nine times. You see? And she showed me the dogs that were through the nine times, you know? And, you know, I like dogs, and I like animals, and they're completely vulnerable. And it just... I'm telling you, if I'd have had a surgeon in there, I would have killed him. We were talking to the kids about these labs, and I learned not only about the surgery labs, I learned that there was a much worse lab. <laughs> Believe it or not, week three of the first year at vet school, these kids, you know, they'd been fighting their whole life to get into vet school and all this. So week three, this son of a bitch, gives them every three kids a cat, feeds the cat cream, and then tells the kids to do exploratory surgery. Week three, they didn't know anything about anesthesia, didn't know anything about surgery, didn't know anything about anything. We just want you to cut the cat's intestines open and watch the cream, the cream get transported through the villi. The next week, that was the third week of this discussion, the kids come in and there was a guy from the Air Force uh, who was approximately 12 years older than the other kids, give or take. And, and he greets me as I come in at 8 o'clock in the morning. He says, sir, sir. I was, I said, shh, 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 please. I said, I'm a New Yorker. I didn't go to bed in New York till noon. Worked all night, so have mercy, you know. And he says, sir, we have a presentation for you. I said, really, what is it? He hands me a, a, a scroll, a rolled up scroll. And I said, what the hell is this? He said, It's a statement by 58 of us that we won't do it. I said, what do you mean you won't do it? Do you think it's your choice? You know, this hippie shit? It's not going to fly in vet school. They'll throw you out. They said, well, we're not going to violate our... Co we're coming into this field to care for animals. And cutting nine times is not caring. I said, you got a good point. They said, will you present it to the dean? and make our case. And the dean was a pretty liberal guy. He ended up being the dean at Cornell for a bunch of years. But his reaction was extremely defensive. He said, you know, we've got seven kids we turn away for everyone we take. I'll just throw these kids out and bring those kids in. And uh, I said, hey, wait a minute, Bob. You put me in there to accomplish this. And now I've accomplished it, and you have to deal with it. And you don't deal with it by throwing the kids out. I said, I can see I'm not going to get anywhere with you. I'm going to call the New York Times. And I started making up headlines. Veterinary school shockingly uses animal nine times to teach surgery. And he said, no, come back, come back. We'll form a committee. I said, who's on the committee? He said, the students the surgeons, you,
I wasn't worried about the surgeons because I knew them from the gym and I knew them as people, not as surgeons, you know. They were just regular guys, you know. So I went in to see two of them in one office and I said, is that the only way to teach surgery? And they said, of course not. I said, is that the best way to teach surgery? They said, no, it's a terrible way. Do you think we like it? I said, I don't know, you do it. Yeah, but we do it because we don't have the budget to do it right. I said, this is a matter of money? Well, put it this way, Bernie. Uh, if we use one dog nine times, we save eight dogs. I said, that's not the point. Do you realize how fucking brutalizing you are to, to these kids who their whole lives have looked up to you as being on a pedestal? You know, as being the archetypal humane people? Oh, we never thought of that, you know, but we don't like it anyway. I said, well, what can we do? He said, get more dogs. But it was also clear to me what would happen if this got out in the media, you know. This was the late 70s. And for 20 years, the demography of veterinary medicine had changed from being primarily farm-oriented to being primarily companion animal-oriented. Now, how in the hell are the, the citizens of the state of Colorado going to feel when they find out that their beloved vets are learning by doing a dog nine times because it doesn't have an owner? You see, instead of finding them an owner. So... Um, the surgeons actually were very quick to convince, much more so than the administrators. And I said, you know, Pete, you didn't go into vet med to do this kind of thing, did you? No, hell no. You know? And so uh, we, got, we got a solid core of the surgeons behind us. And then the committee started meeting when the term ended. And uh, they adopted a policy of uh, single surgery with the kids graded on aftercare.